Hey, this is Seth Juarez from Dev Express with Mads. Now, how do you say your last name in? Wh which language do you want it in? Let's hear it in the Scandinavian. Oh, you don't. Tongue. Need, you say Swedish. I'm Danish, and in Danish it's Torgersen. Oh my gosh. Uh, Here we say Torgersen. Did you get that? Because that's uh, we're gonna try to. It say isn't. That. It's so hard that you can't even record it. Right. It okay. actually. It just comes it, across it just as bleep, bleep. Bleep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you do at Microsoft? I am PM on the uh, C sharp and VB and F sharp team. So all the languages. Yeah, well, we, all the cool all the, languages. All the cool languages. <laughs> all the .NET languages. We're one team. I'm a PM on that team, working on the C sharp language. Interesting. So yeah. you guys dropped a bomb on us today. Yeah. What was it, and what were you guys thinking? <laughs> Well, so we had things that people were suspecting, which is that we were coming out with a preview of what we call Project Roslyn, right. uh, the .NET compiler platform is of the course. official name. Uh, the thing that I think surprised people a little was that we were also open sourcing large parts of it. Um, yeah, so that was a more surprising thing. What How much of it are you open sourcing? Is there parts that are not open source? Yeah, um, Roslyn has several layers um, and uh, the most important and interesting parts are the compiler, uh -huh. uh, which is, you know, not just a, a good old-fashioned batch pipeline compiler, but uh -huh. it's actually a whole uh, object model now built as an API interesting. for interacting with source code. Uh -huh. Okay, and um, and that whole part is open sourced. Right now, there's some IDE integration and stuff on top that we haven't open sourced, of course. Um, and that's sort of the more VS specific stuff. Okay, now pretend I don't know anything. I already do. <laughs> <laughs> Why would this be interesting for a developer? What can you do with this now? Well, so with Roslyn itself, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, I think that. People should know that Roslyn is such a complete and faithful and efficient representation of source code uh -huh. that we built all our ID features on the public API ourselves. There's no secret backdoor between the ID and, and the Roslyn compiler. Uh, in either C Sharp or VB, it's completely, we've hardened that API with our own demands from uh, running an efficient, uh, delicious, smart ID experience that's way superior even to what we have today. And that API is available to whoever wants to go and build their own like VS plugins or batch analysis or whatever of C Sharp or VB code, wow. transformations, code fixes, diagnostics. Anyone can go and build those, share those, uh -huh. um, you know, for their own organization or for the world or whatever. And so really we from having a closed system where we were the only ones who could enhance the C Sharp experience with deep language stuff, really, right. um, and a few other guys right, sure. um, who had like a deep model of, of their own. Uh, uh, I wonder who. Now, <laughs> yeah, they have a booth over there. Oh, I think. Geez, uh, <laughs> were you swearing on no, camera? No, I, I said whatever. Oh, you said, oh, you said, oh, oh, was, <laughs> yeah, they do have cheese sticks. Yeah, oh, yeah, they do. They um, do. And, um, and now we're sort of democratizing that model so that everybody can build deep language stuff to, to fit their needs. And it's really easy to do, like building a little diagnostic that checks your coding guidelines like or... Like cyclomatic complexity or just stuff like that. Uh, probably, uh, if, maybe. <laughs> Something. Think about it. Uh, For sure I, I, lines of code, right? <laughs> that you could do. I'm thinking more like highlighting in real time squiggle oh, things so in your code that are, that, yeah. you know, equivalent to the kind of diagnostics that we have in the IDE. You could imagine things like, uh, for instance, one that was shown in a talk today. If you have if statements without braces around the, uh, the consequence, oh, you can see. highlight that. You can offer a code fix that will fix it using the object Roslyn, you know, the Roslyn object model to swizzle things around. Full fidelity keeps comments and. Uh, and uh, all your formatting and so on, and and it's just really easy to plug your own stuff into. So I'm, my personal opinion is a static language, you know, is this big house, but the foundation is the compiler. You guys literally ripped it out. Yes. Put it back in. How do you dog food that kind of thing? Well, at first it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you build the compiler using the? Comp no, you can do that. I mean, we we had a fully functioning C sharp and VB compiler already, so right. so it's easy enough to bootstrap actually. Okay. The the difficult thing is deciding. Okay, when are we actually going to dog food in earnest here? Because the way we built it is, um, you know, kind of a poke through approach where 
we built like we had five language features or so in the first version uh -huh. that we were take all the way through to code generation I and, see. and then kind of broaden out from there so you pretty soon have something to you have a, you have a structure to hang things on right and get the architecture right and so on and then that means as soon as you have kind of a critical set of features you can start dog fooding for bigger and bigger things and, and kind of get it going like that but so, it's been a, it's been a long process we've been at it for about four years depending on how you count so do you guys use that compiler for everything you build now yes everything yes since this fall this fall we hit what we call the big switch which is all of dev div went over to use the Roslyn based compilers for all the c-sharp and vb code so that's, we've been doing it like for about six months that's internally. quite a test that was quite a test <laughs> And we were, were we were very nervous. Did you stay up all night that night when they turned it on? Or? Um, I think I slept pretty well. Oh, okay. We had we have super good tests, you know, for compatibility and performance and all those things. We have an amazing test suite that we built up as we built the Roslyn project to keep us honest all the time. So anecdotally, I heard that once you switch to the Roslyn compiler to build everything, it just got faster. Is this true? Uh, there's some truth to it. The um, there are certain differences in how we generate code that will sometimes generate faster code. And the compilation itself is, well, it's, it's built in managed code now. And there's a little tax for that, but sure. actually not much. And, um, and we parallelize much better because we have an immutable object model. Oh. And so we don't have to worry about shared state. And that means we can parallelize the heck out of the compilation pro uh, process in, in several places, which means that the more cores you have, the faster the compiler runs. That's interesting. Now, so depending on architecture, we'll be a little slower or a little faster or a lot faster. Interesting. Um, and also depending on what you're compiling. So that's interesting. You, you mentioned immutability, which leads yes. me to thinking about functional languages. Yeah. Is there anything new with F-sharp, or is it still the same goodness? What's going on there? Well, F-sharp evolves on its own. I mean, F-sharp has already always been a compiler infrastructure written in the language itself. Like I That see. is something that VB and C-sharp are just coming to. Um, and F# -sharp keeps evolving, um, and actually there was an announcement also um, that F# -sharp, which has been open sourced for a while, yeah, also, I know. also now opens up for contributions, which they haven't done before. Wow! Because F# has been open sourced for how long now? It's been a while. Yeah, I don't even know how long. But it's the thing with F# -sharp is that pretty much at all levels. It's a language that we take more risks with and experiment more with. I see. Um, because they have some pretty awesome developers that can take it. Sure. And that would right. rather have us take risks on their behalf right. than, than be too overcautious. Right. And so we as a team learn a lot from doing those things, whether it's new kinds of features such as async. Right. Uh, or whether it's um, how we how we distribute it, such as open source, or uh -huh. you know how we make it open, um, and so we learned a lot from F# -sharp being open, I and see. Um, and kind of used that to help us do the right thing with C# -sharp and that's VB. cool. Now we, as a company, also have a lot of VB.NET developers. Anything new with that language? How's it going? Are you still committed to it? So we have now, for several years, been committed to what we call co-evolution, uh -huh. uh, which is why we're one team essentially. I see. So we do everything together. We are like we are BFFs. <laughs> and do, um, do you wear the same shirt? So does the VB guy come with the VB shirt? And yeah, and actually, stuff? it's it's pretty gross. We swap <laughs> midday. We swap. Oh man! Um, <laughs> it's it is actually very we we're very deeply integrated as a team. Okay. Roslyn really helps here because we had course. we had disparate code bases both in C and both pretty crappy uh -huh. before, and now Roslyn is. Uh, the C sharp parts are written in C sharp. The VB parts are written in VB. Wait, so there's a VB Roslyn too? Yes. Oh, I did. Well, obviously that makes sense now that I think about it. It's the, so there's two different compilers, Roslyn. They're both yes. open source. Both open source. Oh my gosh. Both part of the same project. Both sharing lots of infrastructure where they can. Okay. Sharing architecture where they can't share code. Sure. And as you know, as languages, sharing more and more features. And so we have, typically, we have the same developer put the same feature into both languages. We have the same testers writing the same te test oh, for the same features. Sense. And it's, it's really like deep integration. You, so when you say VB.NET and C Sharp are BFFs, literally BFFs, because it's the same gal or guy writing the same feature Often in both is. languages and the same tests. That is not unusual. I did not even realize that. That's pretty amazing. Well, anything else you want to tell our viewers about C-sharp or languages in general? Well, yeah, so we do 
experiment with a few new language features as well. Okay. Because Roslyn is such a lovely code base. Sure, sure. And because it's written in languages that we understand. Right. <laughs> we are we're able to add a few smaller language features, like a dozen or so. That's right. And um, we, again, to both languages, obviously. Uh -huh. And so, um, along with the preview, there are implementations of several new language what, features. What that are those? I almost forgot. I'm glad you reminded me. Right. What so are the features? I mean, they're, they're all kind of smaller features that will help you get rid of boilerplate, I think right. is sort of the main theme. A lot of those tend to address people who like, who like functional. Right. Um, and in particular, enjoy writing types that are immutable. I see. Right. And have so far pretty much been punished right. in C sharp. Like we have features like you know, auto properties that only work for mutable types. Like you can't have right. a getter only auto property and stuff like that. So several places where writing mutable types was so much easier than writing immutable types. Right. Now we're trying to remove that. The barrier. The barrier. Essentially, level the playing field by adding features that make it easier to also write immutable code. Yeah, because I mean, if you're going to do good parallelization, immutability is kind of a must. Yeah. So we don't want to scare people away from that. We want it. We want it to be a, a free choice. Am I immutable? Am I immutable? Well, that's that only. De that should only depend on what's the right thing to do, right. not, oh, the other one requires me to add twice as many lines of code. Right. Any other language features that are interesting? Um, yeah, there are a few fun ones, uh, but they're small ones. I encourage people to actually get the preview. Okay. It's a little V6. It installs. It snaps onto Visual Studio 2013. And it replaces uh, your compiler. And replaces your compiler in a non-destructive way. You can always turn it off. Oh, okay. Um, replaces your C# -sharp and VB compilers. Replaces your IDE experience. Okay. And um, gives you some nice new refactoring experiences. Um, just sort of as a first showcase of what we can do with Roslyn. And, um, and you can really play with it in a, in a relatively high quality preview experience. Well, we should put a link to this. We'll probably put a link to it at the bottom of the video. That you way you can download should. it and play with it. Yes. But boy, this is good stuff. It's fun. Well, thanks for spending a minute with me. Thank you. We'll see you later again. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing. Thank you. DevExpress.